Okay, so I am doing this with one hand. If it's a little shaky, I apologize. Uh, I'm zoomed out as far as it'll go. But I know some people don't have fifth scales and really haven't had a chance to look at them up close. So I'll do that. Starting with the front. Uh, of course, you have this somewhat of a body usually there's a part that goes a little lower but i don't i didn't like that personally so let's take this off <sighs> my pull start is not metal it's chrome plastic but it is a ddm pull start it's 29 cc king motor four bolt motor it's not a two bolt like most uh chung yangs but one thing that's really interesting uh this chassis design the 5b the 5t and the 5sc all use this exact same design but with the 5sc and the 5t there's plastic uh plastic parts that come out there's bigger bumpers well bumpers this has no bumpers but just plastic parts that come out from the side for the body to bolt to go on to there's bumpers on the front on the rear but this is a baja uh here's the king motor store pipe you can see in the back it's actually got a dual outlet exhaust really good for low end not so good for uh high end it but it really it really lets the engine breathe i did not like the stock air filter it's uh so up under this uh ddm racing outerwear is a uh r2c air i mean a uh, racing filter it's actually got metal on the outside and then below that is a velocity stack a lot of people don't know what a velocity stack is it's just a metal thing about that big around about an inch and a half and it bolts up to the carburetor and it allows you to put air filters on with just a uh, worm clamp um your entire gearbox is back here this entire black back part it are goes all the way I'll spin it around. I mean, it's up under all this. It's pretty tough to get to if you need to get in there and work on it. That's where your differential is. That's where this power from the spur gear goes into it via a shaft about that long. I'm not running a spur gear uh, a gear cover because I like to show that. I need to get a clear one because it's always good to run a cover. But yeah, I like the design of this. This is a aftermarket. Uh, spur gear uh, holder don't know the exact name for that part but a lot of the stock ones are plastic this one's metal uh, and then you get to the motor itself 29 cc four bolt instead of two bolt because there's a bolt on every side uh, here's your clutch carrier it's plastic still but that's gonna get changed over to metal because I don't like the plastic ones uh, here this is the one part that's usually changed out a lot. It's actually changed out on my, uh, it's actually a three piece kit. It's this part, this brace down in here, and then the same thing on the other side. This part right here. Uh, Fat Dad makes a billet aluminum. The main reason I ended up getting the Fat Dad for my 5SC is because when I was pressure washing it, this fell off my 5SC, and by the time I got back to where I cleaned it, it got thrown away. The way the servos are mounted are really nice. You have your steering, I mean your uh, throttle and brake servo right here. It's just a standard 10 scale servo, but I'm running Savox. Up front, I don't have the metal, uh, the metal servo horn at the moment, but again, running another Savox servo. That's the only servos I run, but I can unbolt the cage, unbolt these four, I mean, uh, undo these four 
body clips and loosen both this servo horn and the link and this entire thing will come out receiver that's the receiver box and servo mounts all in one then behind that you got your fuel tank and then behind that you got your uh motor like i said in uh the running video i'll be doing a running video after this i still gotta go to the park but uh you can see i'm still running the stock dirt buster tires up front they're actually decent especially to cut into uh dirt and grass because of the grooves in the center there's a groove that goes all the way around i try not to run these on uh asphalt a lot on the rear i have these all-terrain tires they're good off-road they're good on-road uh, they have enough tread that you can get decent traction on road and also the lugs are spaced out and big enough that you'll get adequate traction off road if you're going to go completely off road these are not the tires that i would use i'd use more like uh, uh pioneers from king motors which are basically trenchers um I can't remember the name of the other tires, but the ones with the huge lugs, Hostile, Hostile makes them. Uh, but that's basically a in-depth look. I mean, you really can't see it due to camera only having, uh, basically it's 2D. It's not 3D because you can't actually see the depth of things. But here you have your choke lever. You, in that position, you start it and try to get it started. And then when you're ready to start it, you pull it back up and it's running. You got your primer bulb. With uh, carburetors on fifth scale, you never want to keep a lot of, you never want to keep gasoline in it. It'd be okay if gasoline has no ethanol, but the ethanol, ethanol actually damages the seals. The fuel pump is actually inside this carburetor. It's built into the carburetors on the bottom side, I believe. Uh, but that gives you a good look. Uh, this entire chassis can be replaced with a better, thicker chassis if you want. Uh, like my 5SC has a uh, complete chrome front chassis. Uh, my braking system, it's using a, a triple disc setup, not dual. So I get more braking with less fade and a... Uh, a third brake pad in the center so but the biggest thing is i'm definitely going to need to get some brakes for the front because this thing is really it's ass in likes to come around anytime i go to give it brakes because of the brakes only work on the rear wheels the rear wheels are the driven wheels by the motor there's these just spin they're just riding on bearings As you can see, but if I try that with the back, it's going to cause the other one to spin because, but if I mount one down, you can actually see the spur gear start to turn. So let's just get some up close looks. These are the charging ports. This actually allows me to get to my receiver and this is the port so I can charge it. Uh, when I got this, it didn't have a battery or any of that stuff, so I had to wire it up. Usually, you'll have a Tamiya port in there, a Tamiya connector, but I decided to go with just a, a Futaba-type connector, just a receiver connector. And, of course, the air filter up top the on the roll cage. You have this metal part that really... Uh, protects things and then you have this back here that protects this i'm going to change out to metal because this protects the spark plug if this is gone it'll break the top of the spark plug off and spark plugs i use are six dollars a piece i use e3 diamond fire and a lot of people say no a spark plug cannot make that much more power and blah 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 uh yeah they do if you stop running your mouth and actually try one you'll be surprised there's the pipe. In order for it to get some type of expansion, it sort of does a curly cue and then comes out and goes down. And I love this pipe for racing, 
But for general bashing, it's not all that great because it just rips grass up. But for racing, it really gives me that off-the-line torque that I need. And especially on shorter tracks, I don't have uh, long straightaways. This one usually gets uh, gets me in onto the podium. And of course, this plastic part right here, there's one body clip in the back. This whole part comes off. It protects all these parts. It's sort of like a undercarriage. So there's a up close and look. And you can see the shock mounts. There's two holes to put the shocks in. There's an upper one if you want it to be a little bit lower. You got uh, threaded shocks. All metal. Uh, unlike some HPI where the bottom is actually plastic. Uh, with these, the entire shock body is metal. Uh, let's see. Let's turn around. Uh, there is a filter inside of the tank. Uh, where it picks up, it's actually cloth. But I always run a secondary filter. Just to ensure that my fuel is clean. Here you can actually see the pull start. The reason why I went with this pull start is my other one was I was having to yank it really hard for the pawls to actually contact the motor, which the flywheel is on this side. So I was having to pull it really hard just for it to engage. But now all I got to do is pull it up and that pawl engages. I need to get a metal pawl for this because those plastic ones don't last. Here you put in your gas, which you always mix with oil. Uh, I've seen some people just put straight gas in and then they end up uh, damaging their motors. You got to run some type of two-stroke oil and you got clots, you got Maxim, you got a lot. This has roll bars front and rear. I like the roll bars personally. Some people don't like them on the rear, but I like them front and rear because it really holds the... It really keeps it stiff. There's my dog. Yeah, I shaved him right there. <laughs> and that's what the rear end looks like. Yeah, of course, with the Bajas, you have this big wing. Usually, they're not mounted all that well, but I'm going to uh, actually take all this crap off and mount it with some bolts so it'll be stiffer and not just flopping around like this. I don't like that. But... There's the 5B Baja. I personally like this over the HPI. I have a HPI 5SC and I have this, which is King Motors. Uh, I like the HPI Baja, but this one, uh, compared to some of my friends, it's tougher. Uh, one thing that does not come with this is these. Let me see if I can get a little closer. <clears throat> These are aluminum tie rods. Tie rods are for your steering. A lot of people just call them steering links, but they are known as tie rods. Uh, it allows you to, all you got to do is back off these two nuts, and you can give it toe in, toe out. Uh, usually, if you want quicker, more responsive steering, you want a little toe out. But you, you really usually don't want toe in. But all these parts are going to end up being metal. I've had this one for a little while, but I've been collecting a lot of uh, vintage RS4 vehicles over the past couple months. But I really want to start getting into beefing up my fifth scales a little more. Thankfully, my uh, DVXL already came beefed up quite a bit. This one I've added some parts to, like Savok servos. The main reason I haven't added the uh, metal servo horn is I put it in a box and now I can't find it. I know I have it somewhere, but I can't find it. One thing I like about this Thor pipe is right here is a clasp that holds it together. If you ever had a, have a problem, all you do is undo this clasp and you can pull the entire motor without having to pull the entire exhaust. So that is my 5B. And the 5SC is pretty much the exact same, except it doesn't have this undercarriage part. Well, I think it does. I can't remember for sure. Uh, but it has the plastic parts that come out to about right here, so the body can uh, be mounted on it. 
and it also has uh, a front bumper with a place for with fifth scale uh, short course trucks and they even have the 5R now which is a same chassis but it's lowered and they have a Mustang right now in the US they're not available because HPI isn't distributing as much they're going to start I've read some emails that people have gotten from HPI and HPI is saying about two to three months maybe four until they're fully distributing again but they're coming back out with the uh, Savage XL Flux which I'm excited about that personally because I want one now that I have a uh, Savage XL with the K5.9. I love that truck. It's tough. The only reason my diff went out was because a bearing failed. So the diffs are tough, but bearings, if not taken care of, will fail. And one thing, one other thing I do not like about this, I do and don't, uh, the dog bones, the pins... That are about this long can be replaced i have a lot of them but they're known to get flat spots on them and it puts a lot of play in the the drive line uh, i've actually found drill bits hardened drill bits uh if you can't find some drill bits find some pins that are the same size if you want to harden them get a propane torch uh and some 10w30 motor oil Heat them up till they're glowing red hot and then dip them down in the motor oil while they're still red hot and that will harden them. And the reason you use motor oil is the carbon in the motor oil, the, the heating it up aligns the molecules and then quenching it in the motor oil. The motor oil has carbon in it and the metal will literally suck in the carbon. So it's sort of carbon hardened from what I've been told from what I've read. So... There we go. That's the 5B. There's a good up close look of it. Any a 5T is going to look the same, except you're going to have the plastic parts coming out. But the overall chassis design and everything is the exact same thing. It's not going to change until you start getting into four wheel drive, because then you have to have a drive shaft going all the way up front and differential up front. So, thanks for watching. Peace.